So now we're going to move on to the golden age of propaganda. And this is the 20th century. Uh, we really see a huge boost in the prominence of propaganda during World War I and in the early 20th century as governments really began to harness the power of propaganda and the availability of technologies such as mass printing and poster production and things like that that we hadn't seen in uh, previous Western cultures. So without further ado, let's take a look. Now, you're going to be confronted with a lot of stereotypes in this uh, lesson and in all of the propaganda that we see. Part of what propaganda does is either develop positive or negative stereotypes and reinforce them constantly, constantly, constantly repetitive. Um, now, when we're talking about war, what we're going to see is a lot of negative stereotypes reinforced. So, with Germans, you're going to see them called Huns. And that is part of the name-calling propaganda technique. Um, you're going to see them depicted as monsters, as giant brutes, of, like apes and gorillas. Uh, here, it's almost like a zombie movie. You know, you're, you're seeing these terrible, monstrous depictions of the other. And you really see that there is that battle for demonizing whatever the other is, depending on which side uh, is creating the propaganda. Now, the other uh, goal of this poster is to sell liberty bonds. Okay, there's this idea that, you know, through supporting the armies, uh, by buying liberty bonds, war bonds, uh, by creating victory gardens. All of these things are ways that the common person can help defeat the monstrous bad guys on the other side. Now, stylistically, what you're going to see um, are, well, it, it kind of varies, depending on whether this is printed in like a periodical such as a magazine or something like that, or if it is a poster. But you're going to see mainly limited color ranges. Um, certain countries will have more of a block uh, style like this. It's really flat color. Um, some use a more realistic approach, and some will use an even more abstract approach. Now, Britain used a predominantly realistic approach. Um, and here we see them contrasting, uh, you know, what is being done in Britain and how they're being good protectors, that they're creating kind of this, uh, this kind of falls into the glittering generality uh, that, you know, uh, all of these positive um aspects of British culture versus what happened in Belgium be because of the, uh, the German raids there. Now, here we're also, you know, just seeing another way to kind of work on the heartstrings of who would see something like this, you know, that we're seeing that there is an element of fear here, that we don't want uh, Britain to end up like Belgium, okay? So you're, they're playing on fear, they're creating this glittering generality, and they're really trying to, you know, say that we're doing a good job, but we still need your help, help us out. Now, this is a great uh, cartoon. Uh, we still see propaganda 
uh, also in the form of the uh, the editorial cartoon. So this is a wonderful by uh, wonderful illustration by Harry Furness, talking about German. And here uh, or Germany. Here we see the Kaiser uh, with you know all of the might and all of these generals behind him. Uh, this disastrous machine, you know, destroying France and, you know, is clubbing the world. The Kaiser has a foot in London. You see that we have the, the Cardinal weeping. Um, what is this? This, I didn't see that earlier. Looks like a box of lies that the, that the Kaiser is, is holding while the missile and the bombs loom over uh, Russia. And oh, if you look at the, the spine of this creature, it's interminable. And all of these are the, the helmets of the German army, you know, snaking its way through the world. The Kaiser's monster carnival of terrorism as arranged by himself in heaven, on land, and the air, and under the sea. So here we're definitely seeing fear and um, pretty much, yeah, just just fear. That's what we're we're seeing in this. Uh, propaganda piece, that technique. Destroy this mad brute and list. Here we see an American version. Uh, the mad brute holding Columbia and, you know, sharing or showing her bare breasts that he's taking advantage of her. Uh, the militarism of the Kaiser wearing the German helmet. The bloodied club of German culture making landfall in America. Really, this is, you know, just demonizing, really trying to make the Germans seem like animals. And we'll see that a lot, too, when we're talking about you know, name calling and creating negative stereotypes that you're comparing this group of people to animals. We see that today. We see that then we see it in ancient Rome. We see it in ancient China. It's something that, that, you know, goes way back, uh, that, you know, that they are lesser than human, that they are the more animal parts of human nature as opposed to logic, reason, and love. I love this one. This is a great uh, <laughs> uh, guilty uh, uh you know, feeling that's, that's created here, you know, the, the guilt trip of daddy, what did you do during the great war? And he's just sitting there like, uh, uh mm, um, I was, uh, just, uh, uh playing with you. <laughs> so it's really, you know, playing on the, the whims of, you know, of, of the regular citizen who, who wasn't, you know, wanting to, you know, get involved in the war there. Uh, but it's really trying to say, hey, oh, look at all these great people. You know, she's reading about all these great people that are, you know, joining up for the, the great cause. And he's just sitting around you know, like, uh, you know, I'm going to sit this one out. But definitely given pause because his little girl is sitting there you know, talking to him about these things. This is very much in the the bandwagon uh, technique of propaganda. Everybody else is doing this. Why aren't you? This one is about buying war bonds. And you see um, 
you know, pointing out across the sea the uh, look at all the money that you've saved. This is what, what it goes to. This is how you're helping the cause. See the sinking ship, of course. This Austrian piece really is taking kind of the emotional aspect of this and saying, look at this person. He's given up everything, you know, that he's going through all of this. And what are you doing? Huh? You need to help this guy out. A wonderful Russian piece, uh, demonizing the Kaiser. And I mean that very literally if you look here you know he has the cloven hooves and the the snaking tail of the devil holding human skulls of you know, greed and brutishness and vileness murdering uh coldness that they're trying to depict the kaiser as you know that that, that they need to protect russia here with um against the Germans. This is called the enemy of humankind. Here we have another really emotional piece, kind of, uh, you know, wanting to raise money for the troops and uh, you know, keep bullets in their guns is essentially what it's it's saying that, you know, um, that you can donate, you can ration, and you can help keep the bullets firing. Oh, this is, this is a, a beautiful one, isn't it? The, um, n not only is it like, you know, the transfer method. It's also kind of a testimonial too, but mainly it's transfer. Uh, you know, go on soldier and fulfill your duty. Christ, the good shepherd, watches over his flock. Our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, Jesus blessing the German army. You know, taking something, you know, well-respected and, uh, practiced and well-meaning, such as, you know, a religion, and then saying, here it is, he, Jesus himself is blessing the soldiers. You're on the right side of Christ when you're fighting with the Germans. That's essentially what it's getting after, you know, that it's manipulating people's uh, religious um, um, beliefs to support war and bloodshed. Now, let's, uh, before we get into talking about between the two wars, uh, I need you to uh, look at this video, The Triumph of Will. It's about 20 minutes, but it is fantastic. It really chronicles the use of um, cinematography and film in uh, propaganda and as a very influential art form that developed, you know, between the wars, uh, going from silent films to uh, the talkies and beyond. <laughs> 